Starting off the news this week, a massive asteroid has passed by Earth today, making it its closest approach to the planet at 9.56 GMT. There's nothing to fear, of course, partly because it's already happened and partly because it will be a great 3.9 million miles away, and that's 16 times further than the Moon is. While it's still close to Earth, scientists will be using the opportunity to study it in as much detail anyway, partly to more accurately predict its next flyby, which will be in 2079. Also in the news this week is the naming of a new pterosaur. What a surprise. This one is from the UK though, and is actually the first case of a Tate Jared pterosaur from the Wessex Formation. It comes from Lower Cretaceous rocks on the Isle of Wight, and has been named after the island itself, Whiteia declivarostris. The material it's based on consists of a partial jaw tip, but characteristic features of the bone have allowed paleontologists to identify what sort of animal this belonged to. So it's certainly a great discovery, and it's nice to see a pterosaur that's now named after the Isle of Wight. And now over to Ben, who I believe wants to tell you something. Thanks, Doug. Next up, we've got some great more fossil discoveries, as two new dinosaurs have been named recently. One of these is Stellosaurus anceli, a new taxon of Centrosaurian ceratopsid from Upper Cretaceous rocks in Montana. The specimen this new genus is based on was previously referred to Rubeosaurus, however notable differences in the bones have led paleontologists to name this as a new dinosaur. Interestingly, Stellosaurus seems to be intermediate between the older Styracosaurus and younger Ineosaurus in both time and morphology, causing the researchers to consider that this new species is the transitional link in an anagenetic lineage of Centrosaurines, meaning that over time these entire species slowly evolved into one another different to cladogenesis when a population is split, causing multiple lineages and separate species to evolve. And finally this week is the remarkable discovery of the first Dinochirid dinosaur to be found in North America. Named Paraxenisaurus normalensis, this animal originates from late Cretaceous Campanian Age rocks in Mexico, and is based on elements of the body from multiple individuals. The anatomy of its bones indicate that this is indeed a unique taxon of Ornithomimosaur, and a phylogenetic analysis performed by the paleontologists placed the species as a member of Dinochiridae, the same group as the famously bizarre Dinochirus mirificus. This is highly significant as it extends the family's range into the Americas, since previously they were only known from sites in Asia. So lots of exciting paleontology news this week. Back to Doug in the studio. So it's not getting any better? Yeah. Yeah, it was just going to grow back. I'll take that as a no. Anyway, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.